Now we will be blessed with meditation and a inspirational lesson by Will Tuttle. All right. Thank you so much. And uh, that was a beautiful song too. So I'd like to uh, be actually uh, invite all of us to have a short meditation together and then I'll go right from the meditation to the message. Uh, so please, uh, let's just get comfortable wherever you are. And let's give thanks together for this precious opportunity that we have to be together here virtually this beautiful Sunday morning. We give thanks for the sacred space where we are, wherever we are, is a sacred space made sacred by our aspiration to awaken the truth that we are. So with every exhalation, we let go of any thoughts of the past, any thoughts of the future, and come home to this present moment, the only holy moment is right now abiding in this moment. And giving thanks for this precious opportunity of a human birth. Breathing Engendering in our heart the truth of love is the power, the only power. In our life. And we give thanks for this power of abundance, of wisdom forgiveness, compassion, joy, and freedom. We give thanks for all of the teachings of all the world's wisdom traditions and to all the teachers in our life helping us to Awaken to the truth of the infinite interconnectedness of all life. And we give thanks for this beautiful earth, for all the rivers and mountains and lakes and streams, fields and forests all of the animals celebrating their lives on the land, in the waters, in the skies, and for the beautiful unfoldment of humanity on an adventure of awakening from the delusion of separateness. the truth of our purpose here on this beautiful and abundant earth. And we know that the light that shines at the heart of the universe shines also every moment in our heart. It's shining right now in every cell of our being bringing every dimension of our life into harmony, into peace, 
into divine order. Bringing every affair into its proper place for the highest good of all. And we know that we are here on this earth with a mission, a unique purpose. And so we allow the music now to just open an inner doorway to understand more deeply and clearly our purpose, our mission for this lifetime, the truth that we are. abiding in our true home, abiding in love and compassion and joy and peace and gratitude in abundance in awareness. May all beings be happy and at peace. May all beings be free. May we all realize the original brightness of our minds and hearts. And may we continue together to build a more enlightened society, a world that loves and cares for everyone, a world that reflects the inner Christ, truth shining always in us and as us, through the power and presence of the infinite spirit we give thanks knowing this is so. And so it is. All right, thank you all for joining us in the meditation time, and I'd like to share some thoughts about how we can awaken our inner genius. Uh, as some of you may know, and as uh, we heard from uh, this you know, wonderful uh, Reverend Angela this morning already, uh, Madeline and I have been to your center uh, several times over the years, and actually we lived on the road in an RV for 18 years traveling all over uh, the United States and going to unity centers and churches uh, all, all over North America, actually in, other, in Europe and Caribbean and even in uh, Australia, New Zealand. And um, 
I have to say, I, I'm delighted to be able to be part of the unity movement. It's, I think it's one of the most healthy and sane movements. It's based on an idea of inclusion, sort of this radical inclusion, including all spiritual traditions in our uh, respect and learning from them and including all human beings, all living beings within the sphere of our kindness and compassion. And I think this is foundational to uh, awakening our inner genius, our capacities. Instead of closing down, uh, I, was, I, I was taught as a kid growing up in uh, New England that we had the one right religion and if we would just believe everything, then we would go to the unique heaven that was just for us. And I think there's a lot of conflict in the world uh, among this sort of tribal idea that we have the one right way and that we are realizing that there's a higher path. I love the saying by uh, Charles Fillmore, it's attributed to him, uh, that he loved to go himself straight to headquarters. You know, that base, I think that underlies in many ways uh, the unity principles. Instead of having a, a, medi a mediating force uh, that we have to um, uh, listen to, we can each one of us individually connect directly with our own um, headquarters, our own inner wisdom. So for Charles, of course, it was very easy when he wanted to go straight to headquarters, he would just ask Myrtle <laughs> and she would give him the feminine wisdom that he needed. Uh, but no, the idea really is that we all have this capacity within us and uh, we can develop that. So one of the things that we very often do, Madeline and I, when we travel to Unity Churches, is give a workshop on, called Opening the Intuitive Gate, the Keys to Developing Our Intuition, because it's really helpful, I think. Maybe at some point we can do that um, virtually, perhaps. We, we've been doing that also, uh, and it works really well. But to connect with our own unique way of accessing our inner wisdom is very important, uh, because I think we all know in our bones that our best friend uh, in this world is an inner knowing that we can learn to connect with and trust that will help us to live our unique life. It doesn't mean that our life will always be easy and that everything will just be smooth as, as silk, but it does mean that we're living our life, our unique life, and there's a, a beautiful joy in doing that and learning. It's the adventure that we're here to undertake. It's the the, really the, what Joseph Campbell called the hero's journey, where we, uh, in a sense, leave home. We question the official narratives in our society. And I know if you're on this call, you're already questioning the official narratives that are very often based on fear and based on competition, uh, based on the sense of lack and limitation and so forth, and to connect more deeply with our true nature. So this is something that I'm so grateful. I had the opportunity over the years to study world religions and really see that virtually all the world religions have a core that urges us to connect with our inner wisdom and to be loving and kind to other expressions of life. And that when we quiet our mind, we can get internal guidance. This is the, our intuitive, uh, still small voice that's available to all of us. And when we do that, our, our career, our relationships, our daily life takes on a whole different uh, tone. There's a different song, in a sense, being sung because we realize that our life here is precious. It doesn't go on forever. We have a few decades. Why are we here? What is it that we can unfold? So I just want to share um, the underlying idea of cosmic consciousness. I think this is very important to understand. I remember uh, when I was in um, uh, college back in the early 70s, there was uh, a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of um, upset, really, uh, because of the Vietnam War and a lot of questioning of things. And so I was not immune to that, and I was questioning a lot of things. And uh, I started to think, you know, it's just really terrible that we have these conflicts in the world and domination and exploitation of animals, of ecosystems, of each other. There must be another way of living. I was raised in Concord, Massachusetts, and um, it was kind of a nice place to be raised because of the revolutions that happened there, the revolution of 1775, uh, where there was this idea that we should uh, have our own self-determination. And so uh, we used to march every, <laughs> every April 19th, which was Patriot's Day, down to the Old North Bridge in Concord, Massachusetts, and reenact the, the battle. My father would take his gun off the wall and put on his Minuteman outfit. You know, they did this whole 
uh, reenacted. And, and then later, about um, 100 years later in Concord, there was the Transcendentalist Revolution with Emerson and Thoreau and Alcott. And the idea of bringing teachings from Asia into, the, into, uh, into our society, the, the wisdom from the um, Bhagavad Gita, the I Ching, the Tao Te Ching, the Buddhist uh, sutras and, and all of this. And these ideas really, I think, germinated very well and really influenced, I think, the unity movement. The idea that God is not male, but is equally perhaps male, female, or even beyond that. Uh, the idea that God is mind. The idea that God is a principle that we can learn to understand and follow and be in harmony with from the Taoist tradition, from the Buddhist tradition, of these traditions and the, some of the Vedanta and Hindu traditions. Uh, so uh, this helps, I think, to en enrich and deepen the Western and Christian traditions and get them back to their roots in, in many ways. So I started exploring these ideas in, co in college as part of my trying to figure out what's going on here. And I remember finding a book that some of you may have heard of. It's an old book back in the 1890s uh, called Cosmic Consciousness by Richard Buck. And he basically said that virtually everyone is living in what he called the state of self-consciousness, caring basically about myself and how I can improve my, my life and you know, myself and maybe people around me, close to me. But he said that certain rare individuals had attained what he referred to as cosmic consciousness, which is like an evolutionary leap out of this concern for myself to a broader concern uh, for all humans and really all beings. And he said that certain people had attained this le level of consciousness, people like J Jesus and the Buddha and many of the great uh, poets and philosophers and founders of religions and saints and sages through the ages, both men and women. And he gave examples of these people and how uh, they went through a, a transformation in their life, really through a spiritual aspiration and through spiritual teachings that they studied and practiced and then awakened to and that then they could share these with other people and that and basically what he said is that this is our mission this is our purpose for all human beings is to attain cosmic consciousness this is why we're here and everything else in a way is a distraction it's uh, something that's sort of taking us somewhere else but the fundamental most important thing is to evolve in our consciousness towards cosmic consciousness and i remember going uh, home to my parents and telling my father dad you know about cosmic consciousness? You know, we're here for that. That's the reason. Uh, we're not here just to make money and try to get ahead in the world and all this stuff. And, and um, I remember him saying, well, you know, I'm spending a lot of money on this education for you. And how is this going to help you get ahead in the world, this, this idea of cosmic consciousness? And, uh, but, you know, luckily he had, he was somewhat open to it. He, he, was, a, he was a pianist. He played the piano and he was a writer. He owned a uh, a chain of newspapers, but I was delighted that my younger brother Ed was really on board. He said, "Yes, let's let's do it. Let's let's attain cosmic consciousness." So we really didn't know what to do. We kind of thought about it. Uh, I had just graduated from. I, I ended up graduating from college, and uh, we decided that we knew. Finally, we figured it out. We knew what to do if we wanted to to attain cosmic consciousness. And that would be to go to California. And this was 1975. And we thought, yeah, we'll go to California. We'll definitely find cosmic consciousness in San Francisco. So we started walking. We actually left home and went on a spiritual pilgrimage. And this was really, for me, a wonderful experience because it was, in a sense, like a symbolic leaving home. Uh, my parents, my, my father actually, bless his heart, he um, he quoted Thoreau to me. He said, every man must march to the beat of, his, of the drum that he hears. And they gave us um, their blessing, my mother and father. My mother baked some, you know, some fresh baked cookies in our backpacks as we walked down the driveway, <laughs> walking to San Francisco from Concord, Massachusetts. And we walked and walked and walked for, you know, for weeks and weeks. And we got as far as Buffalo, actually, finally. <laughs> and it was getting cold. It was October. And I thought, you know, I can figure this out, you know, so we better head south. So we, we headed south. So we, and we walked actually all the way to um, Alabama uh, over quite a few months. And we were meditating. We were doing this practice by uh, Sri Ramana Maharshi, who had said that what we should do is ask the question, who am I? And go deeper and deeper with this question, not just getting the superficial answer that I'm this body or this collection of thoughts, but who am I? What is it that actually 
vivifies this appearance uh, in the world. You know, what is the source of what I am? What is the source? Find out. And the really only way to do that is to quiet the mind, because as long as the mind is thinking, I realized I'm always thinking thoughts around me and what I can do and how I can get what I want and keep away what I don't want and uh, what I should have done and what they should have done. All, all these thoughts to quiet the mind and just listen. And so anyway, we were doing this practice every day <laughs> as we were walking with no money and didn't know where the next meal was going to come from, didn't know where we we're going to spend the, the night or anything. But it was really true. We had miracles happening every night. I, I really learned about the abundance of the universe. If you, like Jesus said, if you seek ye first the kingdom of heaven, heaven, everything else shall be added unto you. And we saw this happening. We saw somehow we got fed, somehow we had a place to say. Sometimes it was in a church on the floor. Sometimes it was... Uh, in the woods, sometimes in someone's home, some, a few times it was in rescue missions and even in jails, local jails, <laughs> all kinds of uh, adventures we had. But um, we eventually ended up uh, at a place called The Farm. And in 1975, The Farm was the largest hippie commune in the world. And uh, it was so interesting to get there because it was like, um, you know, we, we were trying to get to San Francisco, but we, we found it in, this was in Tennessee. They were mostly from, there's about 900 people, pretty much off in California. So we felt like we met them in the middle. <laughs> and that was a, quite an experience to live at the farm for a while. And then we continued on to a south and to, into Alabama and ended up in a Zen center in Alabama. And from there, eventually in a Tibetan Buddhist center in San Francisco. And then I shaved my head, became a Zen Buddhist monk and lived in Korea uh, back in the early 1980s. And eventually, of course, I uh, got my PhD at Berkeley and, and uh, met Madeline and, and have been traveling to Unity Churches. And now we're doing, we have a house in California. We still actually have been going on the road and going to Unity Churches uh, for about uh, four, five, six months a year. Although I don't know how like, how that's going to happen uh, with the uh, situation we have now. But the underlying idea, I just want to emphasize and kind of close and wrap it up here, is the idea that on that walk that we were taking, my brother and I, when we had no money, we were just meditating. Um, I got in touch with something that's very important, I think, a little glimpse of, which is this sense of joy, joyfulness that does not need any reasons in the outer world. And I think this is something that is available to all of us, that if we really quiet our mind enough, we can get a glimpse of this bubbling spring of joy that is our true nature. And this joy, I think, comes when we're following our intuition, when we're living our life. Because I remember on that walk, we really had no reason in the outer world to be happy. We had no security. We had no money. We didn't know where we were going to spend the night. We weren't doing what we were supposed to do. My parents really didn't like it. I mean, everybody said it was ridiculous. But we were living our life. And I think that's the key. If we're living our life, if we're following our inner promptings and just doing it wherever it takes us uh it it's life is an adventure then and we're it's our adventure it's our life it's our journey and there's an underlying sense of joy in the challenges that come and in the uh capacities that we can develop and this i think is the key and, and so i just want to close with this idea of being grateful for our inner uh, guidance system our intuition and being grateful for this community because a unity community is a community of, of, of people, individuals, precious expressions of life, each one of us doing our best to connect with our inner wisdom, our, our inner guidance system and the teachings, and then to live that and then to support each other in that quest. And I don't think there's anything more important a human being can do on this earth than to cultivate as best we can our own mental and spiritual and emotional um, clarity and wisdom and depth, and then to support communities that are doing the same thing, to help others do that, to pass it on to future generations. It's come through the generations. And the most important thing is to, is to do our part, to cultivate and to spread and to pass this on to others. And when we do this, we create a field around us of liberation. We don't have to try to change other people. We change ourselves, make ourselves more aware and more kind and loving and that's the greatest um, gift that we can give to others to help them actually change and become more aware and kind and loving 
and joyful because we become the living example of that. And when we create a community that's doing that, we attract others, the highest in others. So I want to just close by thanking all of you for the efforts that you're making. No effort is ever lost. And together, uh, we can continue to create a world of peace and healing and freedom and justice for everyone. Thank you very much. Thanks. So thank you, uh, Will, and couldn't help but think, you know, the parallel of uh, the peace program um, right. traveling. And, you know, we just, uh, before I took a two week vacation, we were engaged in uh, a series on trust and talk about the epitome of trust in, in striking out and, and taking that journey um, with your brother and, and just trusting your inner guidance and trusting that all is provided for. So uh, a very powerful story. And maybe we can be in touch about you doing a workshop about opening that inner you know, and trusting right. that inner intuition in the future, if you would like. Great. Yes, that sounds like a good idea. Thanks. Awesome. And I just want to do a quick check in. How are, how, are, how is the situation with the wildfires by you? Well, it's um, definitely when I look out the windows here, it's like the great smoky mountains all around us. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's a lot of smoke. Um, but fortunately, right where we are, and it's been this way most of the time, the air quality is good. So it's, it's, we're in this little, we're in this valley. We seem to be somehow protected uh, from the smoke, but we can see it. And it's, it's pretty bad. I know in Sacramento, San Francisco, which those are about uh, two hours away from us. But right here, fortunately, we're, we're doing okay with the air quality. But thank you. Awesome. So we, we will continue to hold, uh, you know, California, our nation. Um, we are certainly living in interesting times. And in yeah. the midst of, the universe presenting lots of opportunity for us to rise in healing. And, and like you talked about living from a cosmic consciousness opposed to um, the self-limiting me, 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 which has kind of led to some of the things that we are experiencing. So a very timely message and I thank you and uh, look forward to sh talking with you with the community and fellowship. And I'm just gonna have us, uh, James is gonna come back on and uh, close this out. And uh, we also get the opportunity to hear one more special music in just a moment. Okay, thank you so much, James. And thank you everyone for uh, supporting this community. That's so important. Uh, so I'll just play a short piece of music here to close. This is a, a piece uh, that's from the Islands of Light CD that was inspired actually by a little mouse, Madeline and I, uh, right on this piano, at one point we had some mice in the house, <laughs> and I would catch them and transport them across this little stream below the house, and um, and I had this mouse in a jar, and I was just playing to the mouse, like Angelus, I, I like to tune into people, even to mice, <laughs> and see what, and this melody came, and I'd like to share it with you now, and just even even a mouse, even anything that God creates can inspire us with compassion and joy and creativity so um, enjoy this is the mouse piece
beautiful. Thank you. Thank you.